Hey guys, I picked up this MaxiTrack dual compressor from Napa for about $75. Supposedly this is faster than a dual ARB compressor. What it's lacking is a pressure sensitive switch, which is where this comes in. I'm going to show you guys how to install one of these and why it's important. So some of you guys might be wondering, why do you even need a pressure switch in your compressor setup? What these switches do is they act essentially as a safety so that your system never over pressurizes. Say you're talking to a buddy and just forget, this will automatically turn off your system in this case at 120 PSI. You don't want over pressurization in these cylinder heads because that is what leads to premature failure. Another benefit of these pressure switches is it allows the device at the end of your hose to turn the compressor on and off. So in the case of this, you're airing up and then you let go, the pressure will build up and the compressor will automatically turn off. You don't need to come running back to the compressor and using the switch on the back. Another example is if you have one of these like four-way air up systems, uh, if you want to build one, I have a whole video on this. And in this case, I put this into the compressor and I just can simply turn this on and off to turn also the compressor on and off. Because when I block this, the pressure will build up and the pressure switch will automatically turn off the compressor. Makes it a lot easier than fumbling in the back with the other switch. So the first piece you're going to need is this one and a half inch length, one eighth to one eighth pipe. You're going to need this female one eighth inch to quarter inch male adapter. You're going to need this three way quarter inch pipe. You're going to use this quarter inch universal female coupler. You're going to want to use this quarter inch pressure switch. This one turns on at 90 PSI off at 120 PSI. You're going to need a couple miscellaneous uh, wire connectors, butt ends, and these will connect into the pressure switch. Some plier wire cutters and a uh, soldering tool. So the first thing you want to do is get a screwdriver and undo all these screws on the front and back and you're going to remove this plastic cover. So on this back side, I've already done it, but what you're going to want to do is use a lighter or a torch like this. And you're going to want to heat up this section. And there is some thread lock that makes this little piece uh, really hard to remove. It kind of looks like this. But once it's heated up, get some pliers and you're just going to slowly unthread it and it comes out pretty easily. Now get some Teflon tape and grab your fittings and these screw in clockwise the tape you want to put on counterclockwise and what that does is it makes sure that when you screw these in the tape doesn't get unraveled. Now you don't want to overdo it and you don't want any of this tape going into the fitting hole. Now do all the other fittings. Now that we've got these all taped up we're going to assemble this and install it into the compressor. Use some pliers or wrenches to make sure all the fittings are tight. Once you've assembled these three pieces, put it off to the side and we're going to jump to some wiring real quick. Now if you pull this back side off, you'll see a circuit board. What we're going to actually do is snip this wire because this is the wire that we're going to connect to our pressure switch. This wire goes from the switch back here to the circuit board. Do not use the red wire that goes from the switch to the power supply. Now once you've cut those wires, put on these butt splicers. You're going to want two uh, pieces of wire. These are about, I'd say, four to five inches long. I'm going to strip one end. Now we'll insert these ends into the other side of the butt connector. Get your heat gun or soldering tool or whatever you use to seal heat shrink. All right, now what we're going to do is reassemble all this stuff. And while we do that, we're going to thread these two lines 
out through this hole. All right, now we're back on the back side and we've got the two wires sticking out. You wanted these a little long because you want to see exactly how much you're going to need. So let's kind of just mock it up. This is going to thread in here. Right. And then this pressure switch will be on this side. So this is actually going to be exactly the right amount I need. So I don't actually have to trim these. But let's go ahead and uh, strip these wires. Now let's put these on. Cool. Now I'm just going to heat shrink this side. I'm going to leave these, the mouths open so it's easier to get onto the plugs. Cool. Now that we have this T kind of threaded in, what we're going to do is just make sure it's nice and tight. And we want to make sure that once it's tight, it's it's at this perpendicular position because that's where your pressure switch is going to go, and you want it pointed that way. And on this side, you want the female air hose coupler. Let's get this nice and tight. So you want to use a wrench to make sure this is nice and tight. Okay. Okay. Once that's tight, you're going to want to put these butt ends on. Safety. Probably made these a little bit longer, a little bit tight for my comfort, but they should be fine. And then last thing, I'm going to just heat this up real quick so they don't slip off. All right, this should be good to go, guys. Let's test it out. All right, guys, I have this uh, wired up temporarily to a battery pack over here. Uh, all the wires are in. You still are going to use this power switch, but let me show you how it works now. I'm going to demonstrate with this little air gun. Uh, when I pull this lever, air comes out. When I let go, it stops and pressure will build up. So I'm just going to put this male end into the female side of the compressor. It's now locked in. And I'm going to turn this on and see what happens. It hit 120 PSI and it turned it off. This compressor is on right now. As soon as I pull this lever, this compressor should turn back on. And once I let go of the lever, it should turn off again. Now I don't have to come running back to the compressor to turn it on and off if I have uh, in between the compressor and this gun or any other thing that I'm using to air up a long hose. The whole compressor is now controlled at the very end. So there you go guys. This is the Maxi Track dual compressor now with a built-in pressure switch. This all combined was 75 bucks and I think about 30 bucks for the components for the pressure switch. If you have any questions, uh, leave a comment below and uh, hope this is helpful. All right guys, update is working great and it stopped. And so I started doing some digging and I don't know if you guys can see this right here. So you see that little uh, shiny thing poking out? That's coming off this positive leaf straight from the battery cable and it's poking through this heat shrink further up you just see the heat shrink completely just exposed. Uh, really bad 
wiring here guys this is a major safety hazard fire hazard and this thing is not fused at all i'm wondering if something kind of shorted out because this is the positive wire it could have hit the chassis or something anyways um i kind of tested uh the other wiring it's not the switch or any wiring that i touched um so i don't know if the one of these relays down here burnt out so just a heads up Here's another angle. You see those little uh, little wires coming through the heat shrink? Yeah, that's sketch down on the bottom here too. And obviously that big open patch right there. All right, guys, that was uh, hopefully helpful because you can apply the same principles in the parts uh, to a lot of different compressors that you want to add a pressure switch to. but. As far as the maxi track, I don't know if I can really recommend it. I might try to get a replacement and uh, do it to that one as well. But at this point, the sketchy wiring kind of really throws me off. It's not worth it, uh, especially if I wouldn't hard mount this because, yeah, I, I don't know uh, if it's going to catch on fire or something. Um, if it's just clamped to the battery, it's not as big of a deal. But all in all, uh, you kind of get what you pay for. Anyways, hopefully this was helpful or at least fun. I'll talk to you guys later.